I think this is one of the most effective ads we've looked at this campaign season. You're gonna frame your opponent as crazy. You better not be crazy yourself. Welcome to Political Experts React, where we break down political ads and media, explain what the people behind them are trying to accomplish, and decide whether or not they did a good job. I'm Dan Pfeiffer, former communications director for Barack Obama, and joining me today is a man who needs no introduction, my Positive America co-host, a co-founder for Comedia, and the host of the amazing podcast, The Wilderness. Season three is out now. John Favreau. Welcome to a show that is named Political Experts React, something that you're probably learning right now for the very first time. You mean the biggest YouTube hit from Crooked Media? I finally got an invitation. This is my big break. We were having you here because you run the company, and I thought you should find out what's happening in the bowels of your company. But also, The Wilderness is back. Yes, it is. Make your pitch. So for this season of The Wilderness, I talked to Biden voters who are not sure what they're going to do in 2022. I talked to young voters in Orange County, working class Latinos in Las Vegas, young black voters in Atlanta, disengaged Democrats in Pittsburgh, and I talked to Biden Youngkin voters in Virginia. So we're going to look at some ads. I want to hear your takes on them from the perspective of someone who's actually talked to voters, so how you think the voters you've talked about in the states where some of these ads are running will look at them. The first ad we're going to watch is from a Republican super PAC supporting Herschel Walker, who is running for Senate in Georgia. Gas prices, meat, milk, cereal. Everything going up. Cost of living, period. I'm on a budget. Inflation has gotten out of control. I don't go and see my grandbabies like I used to. Senator Warnock is not focused on inflation. I don't think Raphael Warnock is doing anything. He got in, but price is still going up. Raphael Warnock votes with Biden. He cared more about Washington than he did with Georgia. I just don't know. I just don't see where he's done anything to help the situation. I could not vote for Raphael or not. 34 and 22 is responsible for the content of this advertising. What did you think of that ad? I hate to say this. I think that is a very effective ad. The group of voters I spoke to in Atlanta, these were young black voters between in, in their 20s and 30s. I think they were some of the most disappointed in politics, disgusted with politics, I would say, than almost any other group of voters I spoke to. They all talked about inflation. They brought it up. They said that the cost of living in Atlanta is crazy. They actually brought up gun violence in Atlanta. But I brought up Warnock. And what I heard from a lot of the voters there was, what has he been doing? Literally, one of them literally said, oh, he's just with Biden. And Biden hasn't been doing anything. Biden hasn't been fixing anything. When I pushed them all at the end, who are you going to vote for? I was like, does that, does that mean you might vote for Herschel Walker? And then I got a whole bunch of like, oh, no, he's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> to, to be fair, they didn't think any Democrat or Republican was focused on the challenges that they were dealing with in their lives. So I do think that an ad that doesn't go personally at Warnock, but just sort of talks about the problems people are facing and how they haven't been fixed might be effective. I think this is one of the most effective ads we've looked at this campaign season. It's smart in the sense that Warnock is very likable. So running the same Democrat, socialist, Bernie, AOC, Fox News version of Warnock probably does not work. There are sort of three different kinds of ads. The first kind and most common kind is persuasion, right? We're trying to persuade a certain voter to choose between two candidates. The second is mobilization. We're trying to convince people who may not vote to get involved. And then the third kind is demobilization where you're trying to convince some people who, if they were to vote, are almost certainly going to vote for Warnock, that he's not really worth it. I think when the the pro Herschel Walker super PAC sat in a room and they looked at their target audience of people, they weren't really thinking, how do we turn a bunch of Warnock people into Walker people? It's how do we convince some Warnock people that it's really not worth it? And if that happens and the GOP base turns out, then we will succeed just based on the math of the state. And I will say, the other thing they said about Warnock is, oh, we've seen a lot of his Herschel Walker ads. And he's told us a lot about why we shouldn't vote for Herschel Walker, but we want to know what he's going to do and what he's been doing. If I were them, it it does seem like leaning heavily towards, here's what I've been fighting for in Washington. Here's what I've been doing. Here's who I've been fighting for. It's probably the most effective way to mobilize voters who may be demobilized by that ad. The next ad we're going to watch is from Senator Catherine Cortez Masto from Nevada. I'm Catherine Cortez Masto, and I approve this message. If ever there was a child of Washington, Adam Laxalt, the son of a lobbyist, the grandson of a senator, raised at one of DC's most elite private schools, flunking out of college. But that's not a problem. Laxalt was immediately allowed into another elite university, arrested for assaulting a police officer, 
then lying about it when he filed to become a lawyer. Eventually, Adam Laxalt set his sights west, cashing in on his connections to become Nevada's attorney general, where he used his power to shield his wealthy donors. And after failing in his run for governor, Laxalt returned to his roots, getting more than $2 million to work for a longtime DC lobbyist. The charmed life of Adam Laxalt, always looking out for himself. Dan, are you responsible for this advertisement? <laughs> yes, I did once call Adam Laxalt the Connor Roy of Nevada politics. Adam Laxalt in uh, Nevada, who is basically sort of the Connor Roy of this big Nevada <laughs> political dynasty. <laughs> Lo and behold, this ad appeared. Do you know how many people watched the finale of season three of Succession? Two, three million. 1.7 million. Okay, yeah. About 35% of the audience of Tucker Carlson. Put aside the Succession illusion. What did you think of the ad and the message? Right. Succession illusion is fun for press that probably watches Succession, and I'm sure most voters in Nevada do not. I talked to working class Latino voters in Las Vegas, and one thing that was interesting is I asked, uh, which party do you think is better for working people? And about half said Republicans, and a couple said it used to be Democrats, and now I think it's Republicans. So there's clearly some work that Democrats have to do in terms of portraying the party as economically populist and fighting for working people. And I think portraying Laxalt as uh, sort of a, a rich asshole who became a lobbyist uh, after he cashed in on all his connections is a good way to frame him. I think this is sort of a perfect ad in a lot of ways. We see ads that are designed to communicate to voters and ads designed to go viral to get attention or raise money for a campaign. This ad does both well. The succession music will be lost on 90% of people who see the ad, but it got the ad a ton of attention on Twitter, among donors. I will note that it was on the third watch of that ad, but I noticed that when he fails out of one school and he gets into another school, the school he gets into is Georgetown. Yes. You know, I, I watched that last night and I, yeah. I made a note to myself to say that. <laughs> Tell me you weren't there at the same time. Uh, you know, that's a great question. Let's, <laughs> let's return to his Wikipedia page and find out. Uh, you know what? We probably were there at the same time. Oh, wow. You have this very overwhelmingly working class population and you have someone like Adam Axel who's trying to be a tribune for that working class through a bunch of like cultural war bullshit. And then you go right at that. It's very Obama 2012 and how they paint Laxalt. Very Romney-esque. If I was Catherine Cortez Masto, first of all, you you know, you know frame Adam Laxalt as this sort of rich asshole who doesn't care about you. And then the next step is what policies has he voted for? Or what policies would he put in place to screw over working people? And how, uh, as a contrast, she has been fighting for policies that would actually help working people. All right, John. Every week, Elijah and Ben make me get on my hands and knees and beg people to subscribe to this YouTube channel, which benefits you. This show is now weekly. Did you know that? What? Yes. It is oh, weekly. Congratulations. And I do not care what John says in one of his many podcasts. Stay on YouTube. Be on YouTube. Let that algorithm just, just suck you right in. No, see, this is the thing. You should know this because you host a podcast about the internet. Don't trust the algorithm. If you subscribe, you choose. You order off the menu. Oh, right? yeah. If you just let the algorithm take you, it's like a chef's tasting menu of radicalizing craziness. But, 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 but if, if people subscribe to your channel, will they end up just watching so many in a row that they get back to when it was called Campaign Experts React? Yes, if you, if you go down the rabbit hole, you will come out in an alternate universe, another part of the multiverse where this show had a different name. That's what I'm looking for. That's Perfect. what I was talking about. Okay. The last ad we're gonna watch is an attack ad from the National Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee against John Fetterman. Radical socialist John Fetterman's agenda. Spend trillions more than Biden, making inflation worse. Eliminate life sentences for murderers, making us less safe. The radical <laughs> left has gone crazy. They even wasted COVID relief money on golf courses, ski slopes, and luxury hotels, sticking us with the bill. Crazy ideas from radical politicians. And Fetterman's the craziest. Time for a change. I'm Dr. Raz and I approve this message. I'll give you a slight preview of my take, but what did you think of that piece of shit? Terrible, terrible, terrible. Lazy, uh, too much stuff in there, too many hits, 
Also, you're going to frame your opponent as crazy. You better not be crazy yourself. People think Dr. Oz is crazy. That's what they think about Dr. Oz. That's not what they think about John Fetterman. The Pittsburgh focus group that I did, I heard more favorable reviews about John Fetterman than I had in any focus group I've done for the wilderness in three years. It was interesting what people said about him. Some of them were like, I don't think he's perfect. I think he has his flaws. I think some of the stuff he says is weird, but they said, but I like him. I think he stands for something. He says what he believes. So trying to say that he's crazy, that doesn't that's a message that seems like it hurts with voters who think that, yeah, he's a little different, but I like him for that. And it's like, what does even a little different mean in this context? Like he wears sweatshorts and a hoodie. It's more normal than wearing suits. Also, what's the attack there? It's he is he soft on crime or he spend too much money or they or well, let's put a picture up of AOC and Nancy Pelosi, like one of the laziest ads I've ever seen. It's amazing that no one has to date accidentally forgotten to take out the wrong opponent or the wrong candidate in their cookie cutter ads. It's lazy. It is just people just cashing fucking checks. The ad against Warnock that we played at the beginning, I don't think that was an especially creative ad, but it was effective. Like you don't have to be super creative to make an effective ad. They didn't even try in that ad. I didn't even try. All right, John Favreau, go back to running your company, doing your 19 pods. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for watching these ads and videos with us. If there's anything you'd like us to break down, please let us know in the comments. See you all next time.